Good evening, this is Crystal, and we are getting spooky. And today we have a really kind of crazy phenomenon that has happened to only about two to three hundred people in the history of, I guess, reporting afflictions like this. Today we're going to talk about spontaneous human combustion. So what is that exactly? Well, that's when we burst into flames for absolutely no effing reason. We have about three different cases that I wanted to go over with you. And by the end, I want you to tell me in the comments what you think is happening. Is spontaneous human combustion real? Is it something else? Maybe your opinion will change after this video. So grab a drink, sit back, and enjoy the video. Early in the morning on December 22nd, 2010, neighbors were woken up by the sound of really loud smoke alarm down the street. When they came outside, they all saw their neighbor, Mr. Fiery's home on fire. While the fire department was called, the neighbors scrambled and yelled for Mr. Fiery, but got no answer. When the fire department arrived, they ran to his house to save him, but Mr. Fiery was found in his sitting room, laying on his back with his head near an open fireplace open and shut case, right? But it was anything but. While it is possible for him to have died by fire, some things were a little bit weird. For instance, his body was totally burnt, and pathologist Dr. Grace Callerke noted, Mr. Fattery's stomach, intestines, liver, pancreas, kidneys, heart, and even some of his bones had been obliterated by the fire. Now this is really strange because in order for a body to actively burn in a fire, bones and all, the temperature would need to be between 700 and 1000 degrees. One other thing to mention, despite the intense heat required to destroy the body, the only parts of the room that were damaged by the flames were the ceiling directly above his body and the floor directly beneath. A packet of matches unaffected by the fire was found on the fireplace mantle. The seat of the fire was around the body of Mr. Faherty and confined to this area. The rest of the house was smoke damaged. I took samples of the fire debris and forwarded them to the Forensic Science Laboratory at Guardia headquarters in Dublin to establish the presence of any kind of accelerant. There were none found and I found no evidence to suggest of any foul play either. Gerard O'Callaghan of the Division Crime Scene Investigation Unit reported. Another weird thing to point out is that this doctor literally had to look in medical textbooks to find out what was even going on. Faraday had no evidence of edema in his lungs or signs of hemorrhaging. Additionally, Dr. Kellergy found no carbon in the trachea or the lungs in the samples she tested. These suggest that he didn't suffer from smoke inhalation injury and may not have been alive when the fire began. After all the research, Dr. McLaughlin officially attributed Fahardy's death as spontaneous human combustion, the complete or near complete destruction of a human body by fire of unknown origins. This fire was thoroughly investigated and I'm left with the conclusion that it fits into the category of spontaneous human combustion, for there's no adequate explanation, McLaughlin reported. The meter reader arrives to the home of Dr. Bentley to read the meter. As he's in the basement, he notices a sweet smell, saying, it smelled like starting up a new oil burning heating system. Now, I don't know what that smells like. I'm sure it smells like gas or fire or warm or some shit. He also says that he saw a light blue smoke in the air. Checking it out, he found a pile of ashes upstairs and then eventually finding Dr. Bentley's burned up body. Only, for some reason, only his slippered foot and a portion of his leg remained untouched. Some of the reasons people have given to explain his death have been a freak accident, 
involving hot ashes from his pipe, lighting his bathrobe on fire, or igniting a pack of wood-burning matches in the rope pocket. The doctor also attempted to douse the flames in the bathroom but collapsed from his injuries. The fire from his body burned a hole into the linoleum floor, dropping the pile of ashes that the meter reader discovered. And the hole created a stack effect, a process of ventilation of cooler air resulting in a hotter, longer burning flame, which would explain the total destruction of Bentley's body while his leg, farthest from the hole in the floor, was relatively untouched. At 5.21 a.m., an unnamed member of a group of female office workers phoned the London Fire Brigade while waiting for the bus. They had noticed a flickering blue flame visible through one of the upper windows of the apartments that were close by. At 5.26, Station Officer Jack Stacy and his crew arrived at the location where it was reported. Stacy was first up the ladder and through the window. He is quoted as saying, when I got through the window, I found the body of a tramp named Bailey lying on the bottom of the stairs leading up to the second floor. He was lying, partly on his side. There was a four-inch slit in his abdomen, from which was issuing, at force, a blue flame. The flame was beginning to burn the wooden stairs. We extinguished the flames by placing a hose into the abdominal cavity. Bailey was alive when he started burning. He must have been in terrible pain. His teeth were sunk into the mahogany newel post of the staircase. I had to pry his jaws apart to release the body. The fire was coming from within the abdomen of his body. In an interview in 1986, Stacy went into detail about that night and the flame that he saw coming from the belly of Mr. Bailey. The flame itself was coming from his abdomen. There was a slit. The flame was coming through at force like a blow lamp, a bluish flame, which would indicate that there was some kind of spirit involved in it. There's no doubt whatsoever that the fire began inside the body. The only place it could have begun was inside the body. The flames itself had scorched the area of the floor measuring approximately six feet and totally incinerated Bailey's right hand. Stacy doesn't believe in the paranormal in which this category falls under. He says, Bailey was an alcoholic and drank too much. The alcohol erupted through his abdomen and somehow exploded into flame. And it's actually pretty common for spontaneous human combustion sufferers, victims to be alcoholics. Apparently it's a criteria or something. But then that leaves me to this last story, which is questionable. I think it's questionable because we've done... We've done some, uh, some investigated Munchausen reports. A three-month-old Indian baby has been repeatedly catching fire because of a rare medical condition known as SHC, spontaneous human combustion. Named Raul, the baby first caught fire when he was nine days old. His mother rushed him to the hospital in disbelief after watching her son burst into flames without any source of combustion in the vicinity. The baby has caught fire four times since birth and is receiving treatment for burn injuries at the hospital. Doctors say Raul's condition could be the result of combustible gases emitted from the skin's pores. The body burns spontaneously due to combustible gases emitting from the patient's body without any external sources of ignition. Clothes and other things nearby that are inflammable may also catch fire, the doctor said. There's no complete explanation for SHC, but some 200 cases have been reported over the last three centuries. There's no cure except continuous treatment for the burns, according to the doctor. 20 years ago, we saw a similar case of a 23-year-old man, but it went undocumented. Several theories of spontaneous human combustion do the rounds, but are very vague and not backed by scientific proof. There is no special cure. It can be treated like a regular burn injury, the doctor told the Times of India. For now, doctors say they can only ensure the baby stays away from inflammable objects and also stays in controlled temperatures. 
an episode may or may not recur. It's like any other burn injury with a likelihood of scars and secondary infections. Plastic surgery is also going to be expected, the doctor said. So how can you tell if you're going to randomly burst into flames? Dr. Emmett Zaslow, director of the National Spontaneous Human Combustion Research Institute near Rochester, New York, has completed an extensive 20-year study of over 100 victims of this sudden and painful affliction. These are average everyday people, points out Dr. Zaslow. One woman was sitting in her trailer watching her favorite TV soap opera with her mom. Suddenly, there was an enormous burst of flame. Woman shields her eyes and when she opens them, what was her mom five seconds ago is now just a pile of ashes. In almost every case, Dr. Zaslow explained, one or more of the following conditions were present in the victim. Extreme stress, being a regular smoker, being near matches, gasoline, oil, or sparks, consuming a large quantity of very spicy foods, excessive alcohol consumption, devil worshipping, and the watching of soap operas. Just to clarify, any searches for Dr. Emmett Zaslow or the National Institute of Spontaneous Human Combustion came up empty. So what do you think? What would you do if somebody just spontaneously burst into flames? right in front of you, just vibing, and all of a sudden you just burst into flames. I don't know what I would do. I'd be terrified, that's for sure. Well, anyway, I want to thank you guys for sticking around and watching this video. If you have any story suggestions or any content that you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. I'm Crystal, we're getting spooky. Thank you so much for watching again. Have a good night and sweet dreams.